Hello and welcome to Don't Forget to Read the Instructions at the New Home Public Library. I'm Leroy, Programming Librarian, and your host as we explore the fun world of tabletop games. But wait, what are tabletop games anyway? Well, there are games you can play on the table, or the floor, or just about anywhere. But the main component of tabletop games is that they have pieces that you manipulate in your hands. Be that cards, or dice, a pen and paper, small pieces, whatever it might be. And so I'll be introducing to you fun games to play by introducing them to my fellow librarians because, hey, we like to have fun too. We're very grateful uh, to be partnering with both NewCat and Red Dragon Gaming, our local game shop here on Minnesota Street in New Ulm, to present you this program and let's have some fun. Hello and welcome back to Don't Forget to Read the Instructions. This week we're going to be learning about a game called Schrodinger's Cats. It's a bluffing card game based upon the 1935 physics experiment by Erwin Schrodinger in which he compared subatomic particles to a cat in a box. Uh, now in physics you can observe the position of a particle or its direction but not both at the same time. And so he said when you put the cat in the box and you close it you do not know if the cat is alive or dead or even if the cat is there until you open the box and take a look. And then it's in only one of those three states. And so the game uses a 52 card deck in which there are four wild cards, which are the Heisenberg uncertainty. As you can tell, this is a geeky, nerdy game. Uh, there are 20 alive cats, 20 dead cats, and then there are eight empty boxes. The game is for two to six players, and the box says for 14 and up, but really kids eight and up could get it once they have a chance to, to learn how to do it and you keep track of the gameplay with this lab clipboard. Each round of play consists of players making a hypothesis of how many cats are alive, dead, or in boxes based upon the total number of cards in play, which is determined by the number of people. And then each round, one player is eliminated until only two players are left in the final round. Now the game was created by Heather and Christopher O'Neill and Heather Wilson from Ninth Level Games and they're based out of Pennsylvania. And uh, it's a fun game and hope you enjoy watching us uh, learn how to play and stumble through it. And uh, as always, we're grateful to both NewCat and Red Dragon Gaming for the opportunity to play this game. And if you enjoy this game, uh, go ahead and check it from there or ask us to get it uh, here at the library. So let's get started. Welcome back to Don't Forget to Read the Instructions. Uh, we're here today with another fun tabletop game to teach you guys about, and I have some of my fellow librarians here with me. I've got uh, Catherine, our youth services librarian, and Hello. I have Carol and Rachel, Hello. two of our uh, library aides with us today. And the, the game we're going to be playing today is called Schrodinger's Cats. So have, are all of you familiar with Schrodinger's Cat as far as what that is? I've heard of it. Okay, yeah. So. Uh, definitely a geeky, nerdy science game, right? Uh, based upon a physics mind experiment. It wasn't an actual experiment, it was a mind experiment done in the 1930s. Uh, and so this game is a bluffing game, a card game, in which you're trying to prove the amount of cats that are either alive, like so, dead, or not there. Uh, and the wild card for the game is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which is related to what the whole experiment was about. Uh, in addition, each of us are going to be receiving a doctorate cat physicist degree. Um, and so you'll get to be a particular cat physicist. Uh, <laughs> for example, we have uh, Sir Isaac Mewton. Of course. <laughs> Or uh, Neil deGrasse Tabby. Oh, I want to be Neil. He's my favorite. Or uh, Madame Puri. Yes. And each of them have a special ability that you can use, but you can only use it once a game, not once a round. So make sure you think about when you want to pull it off. Now, there are always rounds equal to one less than the number of people playing. And you can play with two to six people, but the more people you play with, the more fun it gets. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, because with two people, that's just one round. Um, because each round is a process of elimination. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we shuffle the cards, and the total number of cards dealt out is each person receives 
oh, excuse me, one less card than the total. So for example, each of us will get three cards. Um, no, actually we have four people. We're gonna do four. I gotta make sure I know what I'm doing. <laughs> this is why you don't forget to read the instructions. So each of us will get four. And so the total number of cards in play is 16. Okay, so the total we can get to is 16. And of those 16, a certain number will be alive, dead, or not there. We have a lab clipboard to help us track. And what you do is once you receive your cards, each of us will take turns forming a hypothesis saying, I think that there are X number of alive, dead, or empty. And keeping track here, they're color coded here. So the red numbers correspond to alive, the green ones to dead, and the brown ones over here to empty. And when you create a hypothesis, it always has to be larger than the last hypothesis made, which means that we'll eventually we'll get to a point where you can't really make a true hypothesis anymore because if there's only 16 cards in play, anything more than 16 <laughs> isn't going to work, right? Okay, so uh, as we go around, uh, let's see, who was the last person to watch a documentary? That's what it says is the first person to uh, be the active scientist, the person who goes first. When was the last time you watched a documentary? On Monday. On Monday, okay. So I watched one last week, so, so you'd be going first here. But first oh. we're going to deal the cards. If I'd known that, I wouldn't have said <laughs> Well, it means you get to form the first hypothesis, though, which means you got things pretty easy. Okay, Kay. I'll go the easy route. <laughs> All right, so then after we've dealt the cards and as we start forming hypothesis, if you see someone form a hypothesis that you think is not correct based upon how far along we are, you can say, prove it. Uh, and that's the case, everybody has to show their cards and we count. And if their hypothesis is wrong, they're out. But if their hypothesis is correct, then you're out if you're the one who said prove it. Okay. Now, during play, before uh, forming a hypothesis, you can choose to show some results, meaning that you can put down a certain number of cards in your hand that match the current hypothesis. And as you do that, then you can draw additional cards to your hand to try to go with the hypothesis that you'd like to be true. So, so um, let me just ask, if you have three dead cats in an empty box, mm -hmm. and you say there are four dead cats. Right. You could put uh, down... You put the, the three dead cats down. Yep, and then you and can then draw you three new cards. Yes. Draw three new cards, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay, I'll get that part. That's all right, I'll go first, Carol, and do it wrong, and then you can go. All right, so... Do we get to be a physicist? Yes, yes, I will. Okay. I will. Because that's the closest I'm going to come to a doctorate ever <laughs> in my life. So I'm very excited about this aspect of the game. Okay, all right. Okay, so there are only 16 boxes in play. And shuffling them up here. Okay. One, two, four. Okay. Okay. Now remember the Heisenberg uncertainty is the wild card, so it counts as whatever the current hypothesis is. Okay. All right, so Catherine here up first. So remember, you don't actually have to put any cards down. There are 16 total boxes in play, um, and you could start higher up if you want, um, but it's up to you to, to give us our first hypothesis. Strategy. I don't like yep. it. Okay. <laughs> um, it's a lot of probability in this game. I'm going to say there are four dead cats. Okay, so she's jumping all the way to four dead cats. Okay, so Carol, <coughs> the next hypothesis that you oh, could make. I have to take, do I put one card down? No. no. I keep this yeah. one and I just take three more. Take three more. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, so Carol, the next hypothesis you could make would be two empty boxes or five alive or dead cats. I'll go five dead cats. Okay, we're up to five dead cats. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will go six dead cats. I will say three empty boxes. 
Wait, can you switch? Yes, the hypothesis can be switched between alive, dead, and empty, just as long as it's incrementally increasing on the chart. So the current hypothesis is three <laughs> empty boxes. What if I want to go back to dead? Uh, then you would just go up to the next dead or higher if you want. So there's. We know for sure deaths? that there are four dead cats. Right. But Carol said there were dead cats too. And now you have the monkey wrench with the empty boxes. You're confusing me. <laughs> Um, how many empty boxes did you say there were? I said three. Three. Three empty boxes. I think we already made a goof somewhere, but we'll find out. That's why we play. <laughs> I'm going to do seven dead cats. Seven dead cats. Okay, out of a total of 16 cards in play. You yeah. said seven. What, what, do I, what can I bid next? So you could bid eight alive, eight dead, four empty boxes. Tell me that again. <laughs> okay. You could bid eight alive cats. Okay. Or eight dead cats or four empty boxes. Oh, I'll go eight dead cats. Okay. Eight dead cats it is. I will go four empty boxes. Okay. I'm going to go nine dead cats. Can you prove that? Oh, okay. So everybody show. Do dead cats? Dead cats. Yep. I'm showing all cards or just. That's fine. So five, eight, ten, twelve. Oh, okay. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so we, we drop all cards. So right? yep, and we're gonna Except reshuffle. Yep, and okay. keep your physicists. Okay. Your physicists. Yep. Even me. Well, yeah, you keep your physicists. <laughs> um, okay. I I think I figured out where we went wrong that round. Uh, when you show down, you discard the cards left in your hand and draw according to the number you have left. So don't actually replenish so that the total number of cards remains. Oh, okay, so if I put one card down to show, then I have to drop my other three and pull three new cards. Correct. Oh. So to help try to get oh, okay. closer to that process. Okay. And is it better to lay more cards down to try and prove your theory to pull new ones? I think it depends on how far along the hypothesis is, so. We had a lot of dead cats in that. There were a lot of dead cats. Okay, and so now each of us will get three cards, so the total cards in play is nine. So. And I'm just going to heckle you all. Please do. <laughs> heckle as much as you want. Okay. All right. Uh, so I guess I was the, the next last person to um, watch a documentary. Uh, I'm going to say one empty box. And my choices are two empty boxes? Well, you can go up to three oh. alive or dead, four alive or dead, or up to two empty boxes next. Oh, two empty boxes. Okay, we're jumping lines here. There's only a total of nine cards, so this is going to go fast. <laughs> this is going to go fast, I think. Um, let's go... Five alive cats. Five alive cats. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go three empty boxes. You're in trouble, Carol. Yeah. <laughs> My choices are seven alive or dead, eight alive or dead, or four empty boxes. I'll do the four empty boxes. Four empty boxes. Oh, come on. I'm sorry, Rachel. You're in real trouble now because there's no way. <laughs> All right, five empty boxes. <laughs> oh, five empty boxes. Oh. Uh. You're a terrible liar, Leroy. I know, right? <laughs> I'm going to say prove it. Two, three. Yes! Uh. <laughs> 
All right. <laughs> okay. Stand to your me, girl. <laughs> okay. I'm not a terribly fancy shuffler. No. no. That's better than No. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that either. The cards are pretty good fixed stock here. So That's nice. And there we go. Got a nice crisp sound to them. So it's you and Carol? And there's only four cards in play. Oh my oh gosh. Okay. Love it. Uh, so Carol, I guess you get to do a hypothesis first. Oh. Can I go one dead cat? One dead cat, okay. I'm gonna go two dead cats. Prove it. Okay. Ah, yes! <laughs> All right! <laughs> you won! Okay, so I guess, like I said, the, when you start out, the more people there are, the rounds take longer and then it goes pretty fast there towards the end. Can you um, explain what we did wrong? The, the first, first round. round. Okay. Again, just because I sure. didn't quite catch it and I'm not sure if the okay. viewers will have So, caught. all right, so for example, if I wanted to show some results and I'd say, you know, there are, my hypothesis was five live cats. If I put down two live cats to help show my hypothesis, then I would need to discard these two. Okay and draw two to replace them. Okay, and that was my and understanding to begin with, but I switched yeah. back to yeah. the other way of Yeah, and so else. hopefully okay. then the cards that I draw would give me more alive cats if I'm getting rid of things that aren't alive. So, okay. okay, Okay. cool. All right, so uh, initial thoughts uh, about the gameplay itself. I like it. That's it fun. is incredibly geeky. Like, <laughs> the last yes. person to watch a, a do like a documentary <laughs> goes first, like that's, <laughs> Wildly geeky. Right. I love the cards. I had yes. Albert F Feline Stein. Oh, okay. What could yours do? He was able, I was able to discard my research and draw an equal number of boxes from the research deck, which I guess are boxes or cards. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I had Sally Pride. <laughs> and you may look at the discard pile this turn. <gasps> so Ooh, that would down, help. So then you oh. could see what people got rid of. Nice. I had Mittens Faraday, and I could discard all dead cat findings. Ooh. <laughs> so that would be empty boxes and dead and cats. No, just, just dead just cats. Just dead cats. Just dead okay. cats, yep. And I had Whiskers Fane Cat, uh, where you could uh, make it so the Heisenbergs didn't count as findings. Ooh. So, Ooh. That's cool. Those really Tip. throw, I mean, once you get going, you can really get pretty vicious with some of these. <laughs> <laughs> like an intense yeah. game of Uno or something. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, right. Uh, what do you think about the design of the game? So you mentioned the the art a little bit. So, uh, I mean, it's cute. I like thick little character cards. Mm -hmm. um, I think of it as Uno with betting, kind of <laughs> a, a little bit. Um, and I, I mean, as a wannabe geek. I really think it's cute. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, I think it's fun. The artwork is fun. Mm -hmm. The ideas, you know, like the Mittens Faraday and all that. I think it's kind of fun to yeah. play on that. Yeah, fun. Physicist. I like the alive cat. <laughs> cats, yeah. cats alive is a good thing. Uh, I guess the one critique I would have was the stylization of the instruction manual. I mean, they yeah. had words pop out, but the font that they used kind of made things a little bit off. and. And you really have to play a bit to, to mm -hmm. really understand, I think, because um, it could be a little bit confusing in there. Yeah. I think it was, the it, explanation was a little confusing, and yeah. it really took yep. the whole round for me to kind of understand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what it was, um, the, the point of it all, you know, and how, how it went. So um, I think it's a good party game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 I'd play it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would for sure. Yeah. Um, shall we do one more round? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I guess one not? more game. So oh, we can okay. lose so again. That's fine. Show it off our physicists. All right. We'll, we'll shuffle these in here. And, and would someone else like to to shuffle and deal? Or? No. No. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> on me. I've got better shuffling skills than I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So we'll go this way this time. Uh -huh. Really. Okay, here we go. The camera might be able to see the card sometimes when I shuffle, so viewers will be like, I know what that card is. 
I feel like we can. As long as the viewers can see and we can, we're good. Right. Carol might be able to just, you know, show her hand to the camera every now and then. <laughs> you have to turn and do a little wink. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So we've got 16 boxes in play. Uh, Rachel hasn't had a chance to hypothesize first, okay. so let's go ahead and, and let her. I will say two alive cats. Two alive cats. Okay. Mm. And I will say five alive cats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say nine alive cats. Ooh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm really jumping it. Out of 16, that's over half already. Prove it. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, I forgot about the wild cards. Oh. <laughs> okay, we got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No Heisenbergs, you out. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, okay. I'm going to go get a drink of coffee. <laughs> that was the perfect time to use that card. You they were so mean. Oh. Unbelievable. <laughs> See if I ever come back to another game play. I'm not sure what just happened. <laughs> Let me tell you, Carol. Sucker punch. That was a sucker punch. That was. That was. Wow. This is why you don't play with just two people because it would get very. <laughs> oh man. Very very intense very quickly. Cards might start. It's still better than Monopoly, I think. But yes. oh. as far as. Can we never do Monopoly? No, no, not. Monopoly takes forever. And, and everybody knows what it is. So our, our point here is to, to share games that people haven't, haven't seen haven't before. Haven't quite heard of. Okay. Uh, I'll start things off with one empty box. And I can go two empty boxes? You certainly can. Okay. I'm going to say... Five alive cats. And I'm gonna play my physicists. I'm grabbing. I'm gonna grab oh, two extra boxes. Oh nice. Okay, so you said five alive cats. I will say three empty boxes. Ooh. So my choices are. You can go seven alive or dead, eight alive or dead, or four empty boxes. <laughs> this is pretty tough. I'll go with the four empty boxes. Okay, four empty boxes. Hi, right, Rachel. I think I'm going to go with five empty boxes. Okay. Um, <laughs> sure, prove it. <laughs> One empty box. One empty. Sorry, Rachel. <laughs> so close. Okay. No I think this game is rigged because she and I were out in I, the same I was, order last I was, time. I was just going to say that I think after each round you should switch seating arrangements. You know what I mean? I think so. I think so because I'm going to stop watching documentaries. Because then, uh, then you're not with the same... Uh, you know, order of hypothesis making. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I think you'd, you'd want to switch seating order. Those empty boxes just Pro tips. Yesterday. Oh, wow. Remember. Well, I just don't remember. I, no, watched I, watched, so I watched one last week, so, okay. Okay, Carol, we've got four cards in play. <laughs> and you have your physicist and I don't, so Once I'd better again. be very careful. Oh, let me see what my physicist is. All right, you're up. Ooh. Hmm. Uh, one dead cat. One dead cat. Okay. Uh, I will say three dead cats. Prove it. Oh! Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <coughs> hmm. All right. He wins again. <laughs> I think this is rigged. <laughs> Well, I am the one teaching the game, so. Oh. He knows the best. Okay. Not that I know it that much better than you. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, this game can be a lot of fun, and we hope to see you next time on Don't Forget to Read the Instructions.
Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we hope you had a fun time uh, learning to play this game with us. And if you enjoyed this game or any other game we play, you can check it out over at Red Dragon Gaming or request the library to add it to our collection so you can play it here. And we'll see you next time on Don't Forget to Read the Instructions.